Hi everyone and welcome back to another one of my videos. This one is again about Guild Wars 2 and this video is going to be about budget fashion wars. What does that mean? Well, I'll tell you. You might actually have no idea what it means and that's probably because I actually came up with a term. So right here as you can see I'm on my Azuran uh, Necromancer here and if we just go into the hero panel and then click wardrobe you can see that I have kind of a well purplish like, kind of armor outfit here. But that's not what we're going to be looking at. Today, we're going to be looking at how you can basically come up with a um, budget outfit for your character. This will be very kind of shit though, and won't do well in most situations. So what I mean by that is if we just go into the inventory here, and then equip these three items. This boot here, then these pants over here, and then also this shirt here. You notice if we get, again, if we go into the uh, hero panel, he looks like a complete idiot. And that is because you actually meant to hide the shoulder pads and the arms. Hold on a minute, it just needs to actually refresh because, okay, never mind. It's not refreshing because this isn't actually the right color. This is the color of the previous outfit. But if you look on the actual character here, you can see that it's much more bluish looking. Why is it like this? Well, because I decided, hey, why not create some kind of outfit that looks like some really, really stupid pajamas so I can wander around low areas looking like an idiot because, I don't know, I feel like it, I guess. So, how I actually did this was, um, hold on a minute. I just need to get back into the hero panel. I'll just uh, re-equip all the old stuff to get him back, looking back the way he was. Right, so this is actually how I came up with the look. Because one thing you can, of course, do is first go in. Well, first, of course, you go into the wardrobe like I was just there. And then if you click one of these things, you're able to choose out of any of the presets you already unlocked. If by presets, I mean like any um, armor skin you've unlocked by crafting it or doing whatever. So like if we click this, for instance, it changes it to something completely different. Same with the shoulder pads. You can like change it to all kinds of different things. So now it looks all kind of terrible. And what you could do is first apply these changes, which use up transmutation charges, which you have to get by playing the game, of course, or buying off the gem store, although I wouldn't recommend doing that. They're very expensive when it comes to gem costs. And then you basically, well, yet yeah, change the look of your character and apply it. But if you would be doing that, then you'd be wasting a lot of transmutation charges and you have to die everything afterwards. So... For instance, with a look, I um to come up with that look just there. I basically would go and hide the shoulder pads and hide the gloves because the look wasn't meant to come up with gloves. And then I just choose what I want, which ended up being this conjurer's vest here. Of course, I don't choose anything for the gloves because the gloves don't even matter. Then I'm pretty sure it was yeah these pants, and then these shoes, and. I went and basically, yeah, I went and basically chose this, and it looked like what you see here. It was all blue, but I knew that later on, I could just, um, I could, I, I just went around and um, found this stuff. Like I found the shirt on the trading post, I found the pants on the trading post, and I looked up on the wiki where these, um, where these boots here were, and it turned out it was actually just a heart you had to do, and you had to buy them off a of scrit, and they're completely soul bound. But I made sure that I didn't use any transmutation charges because they're actually kind of hard to come by for me. At right at the start when playing this game, I thought I'd never run out. I had like 20-something of them. But when you have 13 characters like I do and they all have different outfits you like to keep up, like, um, keep up for each, each of them, the transmutation charges run out really, really fast. And that's why I recommend doing it this way, which I call Budget Fashion Wars. Because another great thing about the game, this game is that if you go into the die channels... Hold on, let me just uh, unhide the um, uh, gloves and stuff. You can basically dye whatever you want, whatever you want, and have a really good preview of it. So I wanted to give him a green scarf here and green shoulder pads, which actually, surprisingly enough, looks good. I expected this to look like utter trash, like utterly horrible. You can do it, and you don't even have to keep it. You can just click reset and it reverts it to the previous thing. So, that pretty much explains the Budget Wars 2 section and how I figured out this little roundabout way of getting your um, look together. But, let's say you actually wanted your character to have a stupid pajamas look, with, uh, but also having a full gear, uh, set of exotic equipment. What I mean by that is if we go to into equipment, 
you can see here that this is orange colored. And if we move over the shoes here, that's blue. The pants here are blue. And the, um, where is it? Yeah, this thing, the conjurer's vest is yellow. That indicates, like most MMOs, the rarity of the item, and the rarities go up. It goes white, then blue, then green, then yellow, then orange, and then either purple or pink, which stands for Ascended or Legendary. Legendary lets you swap the stats usually. Ascended doesn't, but basically Ascended and Legendary are the best thing you can get in the game. And um, there isn't anything higher. Like, as you can see here, I actually have an Ascended ring which I got randomly off doing fractals. It's a great way to get rings and trinkets. Anyway, I'm now going to go and show you some, uh, and show you one of the best ways to get karma and a bunch of other resources to actually go and get yourself some exotic equipment. Because you might, you might uh, like, uh, like for instance, I actually don't like crafting that much at all. So I don't really craft. You can, of course, craft exotic equipment and ascended equipment. In fact, you basically have to craft ascended. But exotic's good enough for most things. In fact, you can actually raid in all exotics. It's called budget raiding. Uh, you will do a little bit less damage than most people, but it's actually not that much. I'm pretty sure like it's only like a 5% increase in damage if you have all exotic gear. It can kind of sound like a lot, but at the same time, it's actually not a lot at the same time, if you, you know what I mean. All right. So, one of the primary ways you can get a full exotic set without paying anything, in fact, this we actually gain you a lot of money, is through dungeons. And I've just probably went through the wrong Azura Gate. Hold on. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is the right waypoint. Yep, Lion's Arch. That's where I want to head. Yeah, we're just going to have to wait for it to load because even though my computer is, well very very fast the game is just legendary for being kind of poorly unoptimized and um lion's arch i've heard stories of it taking five minutes to load pe some people so i'm very glad it doesn't do that for me anyway so once we're there we're going to teleport all the way down to blood coast whatever this waypoint's called or the one right above it then once we get here We'll be right next to the... Don't mind as the world just loads in. It always does that. That's normal. Your computer isn't dying. Don't worry. So once we're there, uh, this place is where you can find all the fractals and world re and world, re world access points for like, well, world, world versus world, which is basically tap capture towers and keeps. But we're not interested in that. We're interested in this guy here, which may be a girl sometimes. This NPC t um, um, changes their look, what they're wearing and what gender they are and what race they are constantly. And you um, ask for what kind of armor pieces you have. And then you can pick any one of these. These are all the dungeons. They're all differently themed. It starts off with Ascalonian Catacombs, which is char themed. Um, actually, not char themed. It's ghostly themed. What am I thinking? And all the armor is um, ghost like. Well, the armor isn't, but the weapons are. You see what I mean. So if we go into this, you can then see all the stuff you can buy from him. All this stuff here, I wouldn't recommend getting any of it except the Superior Rune of the Monk. Because that is actually like, well, one of the, the best runes you can get. Superior is basically the best grade of it. There's actually no grade you can go higher with runes than exotic. That's the highest. There's only, um, uh, I think that was called Masterwork, then Rare, and then Exotic for runes. And I also wouldn't recommend buying any of this stuff here. Because it's all for level 35, and it costs you, um, a sort of like that amount, like 30 tiers and 40 tiers, and that amount of tiers, which is like the dungeon currency. And... You'll be outleveling this stuff really quickly, and you wouldn't want that. So instead, I recommend buying the, all this stuff. Now, the great thing about dungeon armor is that it actually gives you well, the skin of the armor. So even if, let's say, I were to wear, wear dungeon armor on my Azura here, since I actually have all this stuff unlocked, like the Ascalodian set. In fact, we can just go back into, not equipment, but wardrobe, and just change everything to the Ascalonian set. Don't worry, I'm pretty sure I'll find it relatively quickly because, well, it all generally has the um, same kind of color coding. Wait, this wouldn't be the right one. I should just look for the Ascalonian Performer. Yeah, so you can see this is what the Ascalonian Performer set looks like. I actually kind of hate it. it. Looks really stupid in my opinion. Especially with this coloration. Like, l like, look at that mask. I haven't even colored it. So he's just wearing some kind of stupid gray mask on his head. But... The great thing about this is even if you don't want this to be a look, this is basically exotic quality armor. 
that you will get just from playing the dungeon and spending enough dungeon tokens. And the best thing is while playing the dungeon you will also get heaps of other loot which you can just sell on the trading post and make yourself heaps and heaps of money. The only downside is that it costs a lot of tokens to get a full set. I'm pretty sure it's around a thousand, I looked it up on the wiki. And the thing is that takes quite a lot of dungeon runs. You're going to have to be doing like I, have, I think about like a, maybe a week's worth unless you just want to run one kind of dungeon path over and over again. But once you run it a single time in a day, you get bonus tokens, and you don't get that if you run it another time. It kind of incentivizes you to play every single day and that kind of stuff, like um, like, a, like a lot of MMOs do. And you could, of course, go and get the dungeon armor in two other ways. PvP, and also World vs. World. So when you're um, playing PvP in World vs. World, you'll be getting points and going up a certain reward track. You, the game will select a reward track for you if you don't select one. And here's the screen where you select reward tracks. This one right here is the Ascalonian Catacombs Dungeon Reward Track. And it is actually not that good for getting armor. But if you want the weapons and you want to supplement yourself getting uh, armor pieces from the weapons and armor merch, like the dungeon weapon and armor merch, I really recommend doing this. Because as you can see here, these three things are weapon boxes. And... Weapons from the Ascalonian Catacombs, in my opinion, look awesome. Like, I'll show you one of the weapons right now. It's the Ascalonian, like, it's the Ascalonian Greatsword, and I, like, absolutely love it. So, if we just switch to my character's Greatsword here, you can see I went for, like, this kind of nightmare look. This nightmare Greatsword. But, if we click on the Greatsword, and then change it to a Royal Ascalonian Greatsword, you can see why I love it so much. It's got this nice little jewel in there, and a jewel in there as well. Uh, and it just looks great. And the best thing is, when it's nighttime, this thing glows blue. Like, really brightly blue. Which I just love about all the weapons. They kind of get, they give it this really mystical effect. They're like, oh, in the day it's just an average sword, but at night, nope. It's this awesome, like, glue blowing, gl a blue glowing sword that, like, has power from the moon or something. I don't know. So, if you want a lot of weapons, I'd recommend doing either a, a PvP or World vs. World um, reward track. And then, once you're done getting a single piece of armor, you get a box and you're able to choose a single piece of armor from that. When you're choosing it, look up what the armor costs here, and then pick the most expensive one. In this case, it's the performance vestment. Or let's say you complete a World vs. World reward track and a PvP reward track. Then you would pick the vestments and the pants, because they cost the most. Meaning that you don't have to pay that many tokens for what's left over. You might be thinking, well, geez, I only want one set. Why would I want to, um, why would I want to save up my tokens? And that's because all this armor here is rare. So if you really wanted to, you could potentially spend all the rest of your tokens on just random rare pieces and then salvage them for a chance at ectoplasm, which always sells for a lot. And generally everyone needs it all the time in this game. Anyway, moving on. You can also do it through World vs. World and go through and do the World vs. World track. But World vs. World isn't for everyone and I'm going to show you why. So going into it again, we're just going to go into this. And this is where you select which kind of um, place you want to go to in the in World vs. World. Eternal Battlegrounds is a map that's like constantly just fights are happening and it's constantly changing hands a lot more. Uh, nothing is really permanent there so if you want to like feel like you actually captured a tower there or something I wouldn't recommend going there. All these are different borderlands that are um... Yeah, all these are different borderlands that are controlled mainly by one certain faction. For instance I'm on the Tarnished Coast server which is green so I went here we would be like the main occupying faction, meaning we usually have the most control of the map, but that's sometimes not the case if nearly no one's on. The Obsidian Sanctum is a jumping puzzle that is dead hard. It's actually not a World vs. World map, so don't go there if you actually want to play World, world vs. World. Right, so, I'm just going to go to the um, Tarnished Coast, Alpine Borderlands, and show you why World vs. World might actually not be for everyone. Just gonna have to wait for it to load. Shouldn't take too long here. By the way, this artwork here, I really, really love it. Like, I'm glad they put this in the game. It just looks so awesome. That banner there is actually a banner you can get in-game. Um, warrior ability. It's an ultimate ability. So you, like, you put the banner down, and it revives people in the area. You basically become battlefield, like a, a battlefield medic. Not the game, battlefield. Like, not EA's battlefield with guns and, and everything. But, like, a medic on the battlefield. 
that basically plants a pan it down and just shouts, GET UP to everyone around them, and they just do. Okay, so this here is what I wanted to show you. This thing here, participation. So how it works is that by doing objectives in World vs. World, you gain participation, and this bar fills up. Stay there, damn it. And when the bar fills up enough, like filled up fully, you will get, um, like you acquire a certain amount of points you receive. And these points, you receive them every five minutes, which is known as a world versus world tick. When this five minutes runs out, I, for example, will get 195 points. These points will go along my little mini reward track here. And when this reaches 500, I'll get the next reward in the track. And it moves so on from that to like from the, from whatever I'm getting the, here to the next thing to the next thing. And you can go into the World vs. World reward track and see exactly what you'll be getting. So, apparently according to this, we're going to be getting a Toe of Knowledge, which can be used to instantly gain a character one level or some Spirit Shards. And then afterwards, I'll get a Champion Relena Loot Box, which um, it be basically this, these boxes, they mimic the loot you'd, be do you'd get if you were doing the actual dungeon, so you still have plenty of resources and stuff to sell. It's not as much if you're doing it in the actual dungeon because you aren't killing tons and tons and tons of ghosts along the way, but it's close enough. And then of course after that I'd be getting a weapon, which is the thing everyone really wants, and then right at the end, the armor. The reason why I wouldn't re I say this isn't for everyone is because this here is like my, um, is a d decay timer. So once this reaches zero, this bar will start going down because I haven't participated in enough stuff. It's meant to, um, basically, uh, it's meant to basically unincentivize AFKing. AFKing is a term where you basically just do what I'm doing right now. I'm talking right now, but people would sometimes just sit in places like this, in World vs. World, and just, I think in the past where the time was, like, was more lenient, they just sit there and just let their points accumulate, doing nothing, chatting to their friends on Discord or something, whatever like um, whatever um, voice program was around and not really participating in the world in world versus world which is what the developers didn't want so they put in this bar here except the bar really makes it feel like you're being rushed like when I have when I play versus world versus world it feels like there's an invisible drill sergeant of my soul on my over my shoulder going come on uh, come on cheese come on come on go ahead do the next thing hurry up damn it you need to keep this like bar up otherwise you won't be getting as many points. And sometimes it's really frustrating because certain objectives in World vs. World will only make a good decay timer go up by a minute. Like these things here, they make it go up a little more, but sometimes they've like killed a single sentry here and then captured the point. And um, it's only made it go up by a minute. So in a minute, this thing would then start decaying and my, like my bar would start decaying and I wouldn't get enough rewards. Also, if you are planning to do the Obsidian Sanctum just for rewards, my recommendation is do it before you actually start doing any World vs. World stuff or do it if you're just completely not into World vs. World and I'll show you why as soon as it loads. Right, so this is the Obsidian Sanctum, the jumping puzzle. It's huge and pretty, isn't it? Well, here's the bad thing about it. You see this right here? That's still my World vs. World bar. It is still decaying. In my opinion, this is a huge oversight by the developers, and I wish they would change it. It's decaying in a jumping puzzle. And if I just bring up the map here, in the jumping puzzle, you can see it is away from the Eternal Battlegrounds, which is one of the places you can actually fight. And both the waypoints here are contested, so you can't even go to them. Since there is nothing you can fight in here, and it's all just jumping, this bar will decay no matter what. You can do nothing to change it, and it will just keep decaying. This is why I think it's a huge oversight by the developers, because why punish people for doing a jumping puzzle? Just freeze the bar when you hear it. It shouldn't even count as a world versus world map since there is nothing to fight. And believe me when I say this jumping puzzle, as long I watched a video which took seven minutes to complete and the guy was doing it perfectly. Like he was nailing every jump. He basically could do a speed run at that point and record it and put it on YouTube. I'd watch it and be impressed. That's how good he was. And so if you are not him and you're someone like me, you wouldn't even know where to start. So you'd watch the YouTube video, be all tabbed in the game, and your bar here would be going down. And in general, just not good in my opinion. I don't know why the developers did this. So that's why I'm actually going to exit and leave the mist, because I don't want to keep sticking around while my bar constantly decays. I want my good rewards and my highest tier of rewards, damn it. Yeah, right. So now that I've had my little rant there and explained how the world versus world track works and how the PvP track works. Oh, yeah, by the way, I actually haven't explained how the PvP track reward, um, reward track works. It's really simple. 
at the end of each PvP match, you get a certain amount of PvP points, and you get more bonus points if you do certain stuff, like saying, yes, I am ready before the match begins, not just letting the time run out, and other stuff as well, like getting the top something rather on your team. Top damage, um, like top damage done, top revives um, done for your team, top healing, that kind of stuff. And you can also do daily PvP tasks and daily world versus world tasks. They're actually showing up there, but I didn't click on them, any of them. So if I went into PvP now, they'd be like daily unranked matches played. And if you played one unranked match, you'd get a daily PvP chest, which includes a little potion you can drink that gives you a little bit of a boost on your bar and it will get you up the, your reward track so you get closer to your next reward. That is why, in my opinion, PvP, if you can stand it, is actually faster than World vs. World, and I enjoy it a lot more because everyone's stats are normalized. What I mean by normalized is that in World vs. World, all your stats down here matter. All my gear matters. So that's why I get my ass kicked in World vs. World, World so much. People are running around with legendary weapons and ascended gear, and they usually run, up, run around in big blobs. I'm usually just one dude here, alone, and that's why I get killed a lot, because ascended compared to, um... Uh, exotic. The exotic's nearly always going to win, and also, I'm um, not that good when it comes to dealing with huge blobs of enemies. I'm way better at dealing with PvP because it's only at the maximum five people at a time. That's why I enjoy it so much. Anyway, I'm now going to explain one of the next ways to easily get a. Well, it's actually not that that easy, but it's one of the ways you can get a um, full set of exotic gear without having to pay any gold for it. And that is just simply with Karma. Yeah, Karma is a resource which re basically represents the goodwill of the people in the Guild Wars 2. You do things like save villages and stuff, you get Karma. Although some of the ways you get it, like I'm about to show you, don't really make that much sense for how much Karma you're getting. It's actually kind of funny. So, I'm going here to Malkor's Leap to show you what I mean with the Karma vendors. Oh, oops. Sorry, I started going the wrong way. I don't know why, I, why my brain went on autopilot like that. Yeah, first place is actually up these stairs. Oh, and no wonder I couldn't teleport to a closer waypoint. I apparently actually haven't even unlocked this waypoint. But don't worry, it's not going to take me long to get there at all. I have this um, purple-looking raptor here. It's just a skin, by the way. This is not a special type of raptor. It's just the average raptor with the skin on it. And raptors actually can't really go much faster than the, um, like the base, ra like, base raptor without any... Um, points gathered, uh, by that I mean mastery points on it, it doesn't go much far faster than an upgrade raptor. So, you go to dudes like this, and you can like click this thing to get more charisma, which is a stat that doesn't really matter anymore, it's just an answer you can talk to this guy with, but we're clicking on this thing right there, don't even have to read what it says, and he sells you, and other people in um, in Malcor's Leap, and also the Straits of Devast Devastation, will sell, you, um, will sell you a full set of Karma gear. It costs a ton of karma, though. I'm talking about something around, like, 250,000, or maybe it was 300,000 karma. Also, I have no idea... Oh, oh, that's why. He had that weird distortion effect on him, because I was close to this bubble here. So, it costs a heap of karma to get this stuff. How do you get karma, you ask? Well, it's pretty simple. You just go around and just do events, and they give you karma. One of the best ways to get um, karma previously was going to places like the Cursed Jaw and Malkor's Leap and just doing it for about like an hour or two hours or three hours at a time and um, just doing event after event after event. Like you go, let's say you do an event here, it leads into an event over here, which leads into an event over here. That was no, This is known as an event chain in the um, game. And that would get you a heap, heap of karma. But Arena Net changed it and I don't even know why that karma decays. So you'd be getting like, your karma would be showing up at the like right of the screen right here right above your map and it would say like event completed um 310 karma gained and the next time you do the event it would only be 290 karma and it would keep going down and down and down giving you less and less karma incentivizing you to move on to a new area which you don't really understand if people want to stay in one area let them if the game seems a bit boring to them they have like their own will as a person and as a gamer to just Go to a different area and then start doing stuff there. I really don't get why Arena that changed one of the best methods of farming karma. So, now, one of the best ways of farming karma instead is doing it on the Living World Season 3 maps. Like this one over here I'm about to teleport to called Bloodstone Fen. 
Oh, I apparently don't actually have Bloodstone Fen unlocked on this character. And I've probably... Hold on, let me just see if I actually have the, uh, the Portal Stone around here somewhere. Nope. Portal Stone must be in a different character. So hold on while I just switch to one of my characters that actually does have Bloodstone Fen unlocked. Yeah, uh, this one here, right here, my Nightmare Court looking Silvari. I know I've got Bloodstone and un Fen unlocked in this character because I went to the place pretty recently. It's pretty recent in my, in my memory. And I can also show you what I mean by, um, by, uh, the Portal Tome. In fact, I can actually just show you right here. So just ignore this. what this place looks like. It's one of the Living World Season 3 maps. And um, I could basically show you without giving you any spoilers because I'm not going to talk about anything got to do with this place's story. Because, um, yeah, some people might have not played this yet and I don't want to give any spoilers. The main thing I want to show you right here is if you go to this guy who is uh, basically a vendor, you can buy a Season 3 portal to at home. So what this thing does when you buy it is that you use it and you, you're able to you first buy it as a kind of a book. Then you're able to buy portal tomes to go to certain places. Like this is a Draconis Mons portal stone. And this place we're at is called Draconis Mons. And if you were to double click this portal tome or portal scroll, then it would teleport you right here without you having to do with the personal story and replay this particular chapter, which gets you there. Basically, you play this story, you, you board a submarine over here, and it takes you here. But, if you purchase the portal tome and use it on any character that is not going on the submarine, it teleports you right here. And, once you purchase multiple multiple portal tomes to go to different places, like Draconis Mons, you can put them in the Season 3 portal tome, and then all you have to do is double-click on the book, and it will give you a list of a bunch of places you can teleport to. It is really, really awesome, in my opinion. In fact, yeah, here it is. Here's the tome, which means I can actually, I'll just actually just go to the airship from the airship parts I have and actually go to that back to the necromancer I was playing as because I feel like playing a necromancer right now. And I'm going to show you how the portal tome actually works. Because in my opinion, it is just, well, completely awesome, especially considering that some places have a cinematic that you have to skip. Like, Bloodstone Fen has a cinematic. And, um... I am going to skip it, don't worry, to, like, avoid spoilers. But, yeah, I just... I really, really love the Portal Tome. Okay, so... Here's, like, the basic use of just how you, well... Use Portal Tome. You go to any bank. Yes, a cooking station actually counts as a bank. And then you just take something out here randomly. Like, let's say this thing, which is the thing I got up with a black line chest. I'm not even sure what it does, um, right now. Then... You just shove your portal tome in the bank, log out of your character, that was a sword slash, I don't know why he did that, log right back into the other character you were playing as, and then all you have to do is go to the nearest bank and then take out the portal tome and use it, which I'm going to do. Yeah, and uh, before when I was talking about um, why I think that um, it makes uh, not so much sense for these daily things, I can basically... Explain it now before I go there. So in these places like Bloodstone Fen and all these other places like Draconis Mons You uh, have these daily tasks you can do for instance in Bloodstone Fen One of the daily tasks is just using abilities while you're in the air using glider abilities And if you do enough of them You will get a bonus chest with the maps resource and a basically a jug containing liquid karma into in, in it I'm not even sure what liquid karma really is even meant to be because the game doesn't even explain it that well. Just know that Liquid Karma is a jug that gets you a lot of karma when you get it. But the thing is, this jug gets you more karma than saving a Skrit's life in ore. Like, there's this one Skrit you can help in ore. I'm just going to skip the cinematic now. And basically, you save his life from a drake, and it gets you around like 300 karma. Doing what I'm about to show you now, uh, sh show you now gets you 1,500 karma. So apparently, it's by randomly gliding a bit... You can just get more karma than if you save the So Apparently, the populace of the world likes it more when you do daily MO-like challenges ex instead of saving people, which I kind of find hilarious. Okay, so here's how you get the, one of the great ways to get karma in this place. Uh, you do the daily things here, which is daily Bloodstone Justica Killer, daily Aerial Skill User, Magic Gather, and Rift Closer. For Magic Gather, it's dead simple. Jump off the airship, 
start gliding and collect these little orbs. You basically have to collect 10 of them and then you complete the daily thing. It, it is literally that simple. I love it. Is this one? This is why this is one of my favorite places to go get the karma. And if you have like advanced gliding like I do, it means that if you're not leaning and going fast in a certain direction, then your gliding recharges, which that's why I got it. It's just so awesome. Right, so. Next, ah, uh, since I've already done that, the next thing you do is basically just you use your abilities. So, as you can see here, I'm just using my abilities that I've got um, from being in this place. Oh, let me just also show you how you actually, uh, how you actually, uh, purchase the, um, ability. Oh, wait, first, I just, I forgot there's another thing happening down here. Sorry, I'm kind of all over the place, but there's a, there's a treasure mushroom over here. And these things, every time they pop in one of the maps, and they pop, this one pops up a lot in Bloodstone Fen. You really, really just want to slay it. This thing over here, the treasure mushroom. I'm not going to fully slay it here. I'm just going to basically show you what, basically what you do. Do I don't even know why I'm. Well, normally this thing is actually um, invisible, like you shouldn't actually be able to see it right now. It's just I have the um, the talent, like the talent kind of thing, the mastery unlocked that lets you see invisible things. So that's why I can actually see it. Oh, I actually have to get out of here right now because that's a champion over there. You do not want to fight the champion pack uh, patrol. They will just kill you without hesitation. Yeah, so one of the things you want to do is if you're fighting the treasure mushroom and you can't see it and there's a lot of people there, just swing in the general direction of where the people are and you will generally end up hitting it. Anyway, so I'm going to go back up to the airship right now and show you where you actually purchase the abilities because um, those abilities I was using in the air you actually need to buy them for a certain amount of gold and uh, the currency of, of these all these maps unbound um, magic. So yeah, they would normally appear here or uh, in this section here. And I recommend buying all the abilities. They are super useful. The number one ability, which is my favorite actually, is just a laser that you shoot people with. And it is just really, really powerful. It actually does heaps of damage. The closer you are, the more the damage it does. So... What I'm doing right here is just using random abilities, and if you just you use five of them, doesn't matter what they are, you get the chest. So, as I was saying before, in the chest, all you have to do is open them up. You get a large amount of experience for the map, for any Heart of Thorns map. So if you're doing any Heart of Thorns masteries, for instance, like gliding, for example, this would fill it up really fast. This is why Bloodstone Fen is a great way to fill up um, Heart of Thorns masteries, but I've got them all maxed. Well, nearly all the max, but I don't actually have enough mastery points to unlock the next one. Doesn't matter. And then from the chest, you get two bloodstone rubies, which is the map's currency, and two sips of liquid karma. And as you can see right there, that got me 3,000 karma, which is a whole lot. This uh, the daily ju ju um, Justicar Killer one is another thing I recommend doing. You basically fly over to that platform there and kill this boss. He's not actually that hard when you have a lot of people. Just stay away from it at all times and use range if you can. That's my um, advice. Then Rift Close is a bit of a harder one. For that, you have to find these little purple rifts that are around the place. Hop in them, and they'll teleport you to one of these islands where there's a bunch of displaced creatures. And you basically bash them over the head with a weapon to uh, gently nudge them to go back into the portal. And apparently they don't die for some reason. I don't understand how, because my abilities here are right now hitting people with a giant greatsword and freezing them at the same time. So yeah, I have no idea they're not dying. Then, one of the last ways to get a uh, really good way of getting karma is let me just use my portal stone again and travel to Ember Bay. This is a giant volcano island, and again, I'm not going to tell you why it's a volcano island and why it's here and why you're here, because um, that could be potentially spoilers for the story. Instead, I'm going to go to this dude right here, the Unbound Magic Collector here, and show you the thing you can buy. This thing right here, Karmic Retribution. So, it costs a bucket load of Unbound Magic and actually a lot of gold. In fact, right here, why not? I have the money, I'm going to buy it. It's about time I got level 3 Karmic Retribution. So you can buy this up to three times and it goes up from level 1 to level 2 to level 3. And what this does is it makes it that as you travel around this map, Emma Bay, you are able to just kill all sorts of random enemies, no matter what the enemy is on this place. You don't even have to do any events here, and the enemies will just start dropping karma, like they'll start dropping these little liquid karma bundles. And that's why this place is so good for getting them, is because Arena Net actually haven't nerfed this way of getting karma, which I don't understand. They've nerfed the ways to get it in an ore. Yet, 
they haven't nerfed it around here, even though here is just mindless to killing enemies. Both the things you can do are as mindless, if you don't mind, for this one. So, all you really do is, like I said, you go up and kill enemies like this. The Rotting Destroyer. And, um, by the way, these Rotting Destroyers here, they actually become vulnerable when chilled. And also, um, as well as vulnerable, they also become weakened when chilled. That's why Reaper and just Necromancer in general is a excellent way, I don't even know why he disappeared there, is an excellent way of fighting these things because you are applying chilled all the time. Like my ultimate ability here, it just, you shatter enemies and chill them. And whenever one of these enemies are chilled, they either get vulnerable, they either become vulnerable or they just, um, or they become weakened, and, uh, or I forget what the, uh, term for the thing is, but it's like a, a sword icon, and it means they are doing less damage to you. Yeah, so, um, even though I didn't get any of the karma vials here, just trust me when I say you do get them. That you do get a lot of them from doing this kind of map, and, of course, if you want, you can also do, um, an Ember Bay Rock Tour. I actually didn't understand what this daily meant for a lot, what you basically do is you complete two of the hearts around here. At first I thought it was just doing events here, but no, it's actually completing two hearts around here. So let's say I'd help these um, Azura here, and then I move on and help the Skrit later on, and do two hearts, I get another daily chest with um, 1,500 karma in it. And now, um, that's pretty much all I have to explain about the uh, karma-related stuff and how to get karma armor. But if you're still, uh, but if you remember earlier in the video, way earlier at this point, since it's taking quite a long time for me to explain all this, I was talking about um, budget fashion wars two, and how to go and um, and how to go and get the items. At first, the boots I was equipping before for this character's pajama set, I didn't actually know where to get the boots. So right now, I'm going to show you how I actually use the wiki to find the location for the boots. So, yeah, we're going to put a cut, quick cut in here, and I'll come back when I've got the wiki page loaded up. So, here we are on the wiki after the small cut I've put in. And here we are looking at stately armor. How I got to this is pretty simple. I just typed karma armor into the um, search bar. Then it came up with a bunch of armor you can click on. In fact, I'll just do it now to show you how I did it. So, as I said, you just type in karma, and then you click armor there. And here, right here, it will then show up all the different types of armor you can get from purchasing it with Karma. So, this, um, like the, the Dark Templar, if, for example, and the, uh, oh, no, no, it's not the, not the Dark Templar, but the Temple Armor is the thing I already explained about before that costs 250,000 Karma. So that's not the stuff you're looking for, that's too expensive for what we want to do here, this is the budget stuff. So... You basically go ahead, and then you click on one of the armors here, and you find the right set for your character. So if you have an armor necromancer, or a mesmer, or a light armor class like that, you'd want to be going for this, because you can't even equip the others. If you are an engineer, or a ranger, stuff like that, you go for the read medium, and if you're a revenant, or guardian, or warrior, you'd go for these. It's uh, pretty self-explanatory, actually. So, we're going to click on stately, and this is why I actually love the wiki. Because not only does it give you stuff like concept art, so you can see what it looks like, in my opinion, a little worse here, actually. It also shows a picture, and it lets you see different looks for all the different genders. And you could even be inspired for this by different colorations. So you can see this is Zuran male here, it's got a lovely little blue tint. And this Char female here has got the um, lovely little green tint. Also, she looks completely surprised, like she doesn't even know why she's wearing it. And then... um. Other tints you can see here. So this could actually be a great inspiration for a look if you want to follow. I suggest don't follow it exactly, or people might just call you the wiki person and accuse you of copying wiki ideas, which I guess I mean you can do. But anyway, once the, um, once you have um, found your um, the, what piece of armor you want to have your character to look like, what piece of armor you want to equip on your character and transmute it to with a transmutation charge, or possibly just buy it off the trading post or somewhere. You can either look at the full model here, or click on one of the on one of the um, on one of the links here for a certain piece of the armor. And this is what I actually uh, what I actually did. I was in the wardrobe and I transmuted the shoes in my Azura to look like this, which has this icon. So then 
I basically looked up what the shoes were called, which ended up being stately footwear, found this section here instead of actually typing calm armor, and then I just click on the stately footwear icon. And then it shows here acquisition. So this is all the places you can actually get it here. Don't bother any with any of the places that say discontinued or historical. Historical means that but basically in the past this used to be at a, like you used to be able to get it off PvP. And the same with where mending and shoes are. Mending and shoes I don't think even are in the game anymore. That's what my kind of it's kind that's kind of what discontinued means. But what we're looking for here is the ways to get the shoes off um off just regular car merchants. So we click on this link here, acquired shoes, and you can then see where the vendor is and where he sells it. So here, the vendor is, well, that's some kind of script name, obviously, because I've clicked on this before. And then you can see the location he is in. So he's in the Timberline Falls, and you can even see how much karma it costs. So we then click on the dude, and then it will show you and then it will show you the location it is in. And here, you can actually see the interactive map. So if we just zoom out, it actually shows you where in the Timberline Falls it is. And if you can't really figure out where to go from this map, like because we are a bit zoomed out here, so the Timberline Falls is like very scrunched up, you can just click on the location it is. For example, in this case, that word I can't pronounce, scratch, which obviously means scratch is like a word for a script home. And now here, it shows the map pop up, so now you really know where it is. So it wouldn't be up here, that's like the top of the map, the north, then there's the west, then there's the east, then there's the south, so it's smack bang right in the middle. And then if you want, you can even click on here and get a closer look at what the area looks like. So here, it would say the certain place is a scratch. And I actually, like, through all this information, actually found this place kind of easy. Is I just looked for the, in the right in the middle of the Timberline Folds, found the place which was basically completely grayed out, which looked like it was stuck in a mountain, which this place was. Then I ran in here, did the heart, which was just killing a bunch of spiders, got this completed, and purchased my stately footwear for a measly 422 karma, whatever, whatever it costs. The reason why I say measly is because a lot of these places, the heart itself will give you more karma than you need to purchase the actual uh, piece of equipment, which is just awesome in my opinion. So you could potentially come here with zero karma in your bank, do the heart, and purchase the footwear that you want, that you want with some karma left over. Meaning that if you built your entire set out of different like budget karma armors like I was talking about, and made some kind of stupid looking pajama set like I have right now, you would actually have karma left over from the hearts, which you could potentially use for something else. So yeah, that pretty much covers this video on how to get budget karma armor. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope I didn't ramble or annoy you too much in the middle of it, because I noticed myself stumbling over my words quite a few times. So yeah, that's pretty much it. This video is over, and thanks for watching. Bye!